a reading from Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, then the dominion of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of, the, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will, be, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, through baptism, the mother of us all. Amen. I hate delays. I remember one a couple years ago in my least favorite airport, LaGuardia, back when we flew, back when we did such things, a flight delay, three hours of waiting in a cramped airport, sitting on the floor, feeling weary, just ready to get back home, ready to get back to Chicago. Maybe you have a story that comes to mind when you think of a unbearable delay. The next three Sundays, we have parables from Matthew 25. The last three Sundays before Advent, a new church year we could all use. The context of all three parables is vigilance in the face of delay, the delay of Jesus' second coming. Now, we were told to expect delays this past week. Election, Election results could take days or weeks, we were told, so be patient. Yet many of us still found the waiting stressful, emotionally exhausting. I sensed a weariness in myself and others. We were to be prepared for anything, right? There were scary and dire predictions of what could happen in the aftermath of the election. Being prepared is one of the themes in the parable of the 10 bridesmaids. Now, though many people find the story troubling and baffling, and we'll get there, I have to admit I love the story. Maybe it's the rich images, or more than that, the music that it has inspired. The Advent hymns, Rejoice, Rejoice Believers, and Wake Awake for Night is Flying. The Bach Cantata on Wacke Auf, the Wake Awake tune not to mention the spiritual, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. All the bridesmaids get weary and they all fall asleep. We can relate, right? Just a week ago, I read two interesting articles that come to mind. One mentioned how for many people today, the days, the days just blurred together. Isolation, monotony, chronic stress are destroying our sense of time. One person remembered the adage, the days are long, but the years are short. Except that in the pandemic, it feels like the days are long and the year is long too. Doesn't last January seem like a forever ago? Speaking of the drowsy bridesmaids, the other article was entitled, 
It's 3 a.m. and you're up. Stress, worry, and grief have affected our sleep. Though someone told me she slept better last night than in a long time. These days, people are up in the middle of the night, bedtime a distant memory, and daylight an eternity away. There is this sense of delay in returning to normal, whatever that is anymore. So in the parable, the five foolish girls don't have enough oil, and the wise gals don't share theirs. Hmph. The, they're all running on empty, so the foolish ones go to the village to buy more. Symbolically, we could say that they go outside themselves rather than to go inside to find their inner resources. We all do that. We go online, we snack, we binge, we buy something, we numb the feelings. But after a long delay, and while the foolish five are still shopping, the bridegroom comes with a shout, and he ushers the wise in a procession to the wedding banquet. Now, this marriage feast is one of the primary, if not the preeminent images of the dominion of God, the reign of God, the kingdom of God. Most scholars suggest that the ten bridesmaids represent the church, and the feast is the union of joy, the joyful union with Christ, the bridegroom. Except we're troubled that the foolish five are denied entrance, right? The door slams in their face. There's judgment for not being prepared seems harsh if we literalize it, yet doors do shut and life is unfair and often we are not ready. As I was doing some sermon surfing on the web as pastors do today to find material, I ran across something by our own member Mark Bangert who attends the South Loop site and he writes, the foolish maidens are foolish because they expected everything to be on schedule. No delays. The foolish didn't anticipate a sudden change of plan. They didn't prepare for every possible contingency so as to ensure their presence at the feast. They didn't realize that the feast was everything. That to be there called for investment of one's total being and every resource, surplus included. I don't know about you, but it feels like we are often the foolish ones, unable to see the bigger picture. Many of us felt a growing sense of disappointment this week, regardless of the election results. As our own Bishop Curry wrote earlier in the week, there's no clear winner for anyone in this election. As a society and as a church, we remain polarized and polarizing, separated, unable to perceive our neighbors, hear our neighbors' pains, view our neighbors as humans like us, and invite them into the life-saving work of Christian community. No wonder our hearts are still a bit heavy, whatever we hoped for in this election. As one of our hymns this morning puts it, the evening is advancing, and darker night is here, darker night is near. Now back in the aftermath of the shootings at Mother Emanuel Church several years ago, the congregation kept on getting up in the morning They'd been in the middle of the night for a long time, and they had been storing up oil for generations. As the famous presidential historian that is always interviewed said, even now, and especially now, we must remain vigilant. 
even amid delays for justice, delays for equity, delays for a brighter day, God's faithful people keep their lamps trimmed and burning, for the time is drawing nigh. As the spiritual puts it, children, don't get weary till your work is done. Paul also wrote to the Thessalonians as they struggled with the delay of Christ's second coming. Paul assures them of the promise of the resurrection and then exhorts them to comfort one another with these words. Give us oil for our lamps, O God. Give us courage to keep on keeping on. Even when we're weary, keep us awake to the coming of Christ at darkest midnight when all seems hopeless. We seek this bright wisdom with all our hearts. Yet the reading from Wisdom of Saul reminds us that it's wisdom that seeks us. This wisdom of God goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths. I again return to the wisdom of Bishop Curry. As this election draws to a close, perhaps the question before us is not about who won or who will win, though certainly these outcomes will make a difference. But perhaps our question as the church is about how to move beyond the winner-loser binary. Perhaps it is not about who won, but about how we will be the church where everyone benefits, where everyone is transformed, where the world, especially the least and the last and the lost, all benefit in return. Dear people of God, even when we can handle no more delays, Christ comes and welcomes you to the feast of life. In your midnights, in your sleepless nights, when you have nowhere else to turn, when, you, when your oil has run out, when you are foolish and hoard, when you are tired of waiting, tired of delays, for time is running out. The oil is running out. The darkening days of November reveal this. Surprise. Christ comes in an unexpected hour, even and especially in these strangest of times. And as we will hear with our theme during November and throughout Advent, God makes all things new. Amen.